and welcome to The Lounge. I'm Dr. Jennifer Harmon. I'm co-founder of DeetSin.net and today we are going to talk about awkward first dates. We've all had them. Why are they uncomfortable and what can you do about them? Reason number one, they are not who you expected them to be. This happens a lot on first dates. You interact with somebody who Maybe you met online or a blind date, someone told you about this particular person, and you come into the date expecting something different than what's presented to you. This happened to me once. I met somebody online, and they had put a bunch of photos of themselves, scuba diving and doing all these really exciting activities. But when we met, they were about 30 pounds heavier than was depicted in their photos. And when I asked him what, when the last time was that he went scuba diving, he said about 12 years ago. So self-presentation theory is a theory used to explain the types of management strategies we use to make a good impression. So we all do this, but some people do it differently than others. So for example, men will tend to exaggerate how much money they make and how tall they are on online profiles, and women will tend to underestimate their weight. So as I said, we all do this, but it can make dates awkward because the person that you're going to interact with is not at all what you expected them to be when you get on your first date. The second reason that dates are awkward is that conversations can be very difficult or very challenging to maintain for the hour or so that you're with somebody. So you might ask a question and then you're met with a very curt response. This is very uncomfortable. This happened to me once where I had met somebody again online and we had emailed back and forth a while and even talked on the phone. So our phone conversation wasn't too awkward. Uh, it was a little awkward because I hadn't met the person before so I didn't think it would go that smoothly. But when we met in person, I would ask a question and it would be very, it was very short. His aunt's answers were very short. I got almost nothing uh, informative about him when I was on that date. Attribution theory is a theory used to explain why we, uh, why people do things. And so the whole time I was on that date, I was wondering why was this person so quiet? Why didn't he say anything when I asked him about his job or his kids? What, what, why, why wasn't he sharing with me what was going on? And we can make two different types of attributions. We can make an internal attribution or an external attribution. If it was an internal attribution, I would look at my date and say, he's just shy, he's an introvert, or um, he's just not a good communicator. Or if I wanted to make an external attribution, I would say, well, maybe, you know, there's people around us that are just distracting him. Or he's really tired. He had a really rough day. So it's not something about him. It's something about the environment or the context that the date is occurring. Reason number three, we don't have anything in common. Uh, dating is a lot like a first date. And so you're really trying to de determine whether or not you're a good fit. So like if you're interviewing for a company, you, they might ask you questions to see if you fit with what they want, and you're asking them questions about whether there's a long-term fit for you. Dating is no different because you're asking about fit for your personal life. I had a date once where I met somebody online and their internet profile made them appear as if they might be a good fit for me. All their, all this, this, the, the skills and the activities that this person did just seemed to like it was very similar to mine. But when we went on the date, it, it was apparent that this person had nothing in common with me. The only thing, well, except for skiing. And we both love skiing. But when he started talking politics, it was very different than mine. And he was very avid about it. He hadn't read a book since college, and I loved to read. So I grew more and more uncomfortable as the conversation went on. Similarity is one of the strongest predictors of attraction. In fact, there's a magic ratio for similarity and attraction, and it's five to one. So for every five things we had in common, there should be only one, or less than one, things we don't. This guy and I, it was probably the opposite. 
So my question to you is whether or not awkwardness is really about incompatibility. Or is awkwardness just a sign of having bad dating skills? In other words, what are you doing in this situation to make it awkward? Or is there something about the context and the environment that's making it awkward? And it's not about it, that person being a good fit for you. So let's say it's the first question. Awkwardness is compatibility, incompatibility. We know that there are certain characteristics and traits that people have that make us more appealing to others. So I could, for example, find certain types of people attractive and if I'm on a date that person is not what I wanted or what, what I typically like and so that person is not a good fit for me. But let's say it's just a sign of bad dating skills. Maybe I'm not reading the cues right. Maybe this person is a compatible person, but they just are rusty. They haven't dated in a while, so it's coming across very awkwardly. Maybe I'm just bringing something to the table and expect, have different expectations than what this person can live up to. So let's break it down based on these reasons why dates are awkward. If your role is that this person are, is not who they appear to be, maybe you entered this date with different expectations than what they actually put into their profile or what your friend told you about this person. Maybe you were expecting more than what this person actually can deliver. Or, you know, maybe this person is not sharing a lot with you because you're not asking the right kinds of questions. These long silences might be due to asking the wrong kinds of questions such as yes-no questions. Yes-no questions are things like, do you like what you do for a living? The only thing you can answer is yes or no. Unless they're a talkative person, they'll tell you a lot about what they like. Better question would be, what do you like about your job? What do you enjoy about it? When you ask that kind of question, you're going to get a lot more information. And you'll leave the date feeling like you really got to know that person. And then, that could make your perception that you have nothing in common very different. If my date had said, I haven't read anything since college, I could have asked, well, why haven't you read? Do you like anything that you read? Or do you like anything that you've ever read? And they might have said, well, I just don't have time. My job does not allow me to. If I had time, I would actually read Game of Thrones or some other kind of sci-fi book. And I would have loved that because I love sci-fi as well. And I would have realized that we have more in common than I initially would have found out if I just asked a yes-no question. So my question to you today is whether the awkwardness is due to something about that person you're sitting across from, or is it something you bring to the table? Are your expectations getting in the way? Are you not seeking out similarities that might be there? Or is it some interesting dynamic between both of you? So join us in the DateSim.net Lounge, where we can talk about your experiences on your first dates. We can explore ways that you can do it better next time and discuss how science can help us better understand what happened and what will make your success better. The information is here uh, on how to sign up and space is limited, so I hope you can join us.